nothing like a job well done. I mean, you look at this here, we got a 40 degree uh, evaporator coil, 91 degree condenser coil. Superheat looks pretty well spot on. It's a fixed orifice system. Targets, uh, current values 11.9, calculated targets 11.7. That charge is absolutely perfect. We got the green flag going here. And this is what a typical technician would see, right? I mean, 40 degree coil looks textbook perfect. And obviously, uh, you know, everything there looks good. Subcooling doesn't have a target, so why would I worry about that? It's a fixed orifice system. It's probably just fine. But in reality, and I'm gonna, I set a benchmark here, I'm gonna clear that out. So I'm gonna clear this benchmark out. In reality, this system is literally riddled with problems and the problems that most technicians miss when they're just using regular analog gauges and charging by superheat and subcooling. After all, I mean, you guys said that if we have low airflow, well then our, our superheat would be low. But what if I have low airflow like I do over here because I have this giant return air leak that's pulling in, we'll turn this anemometer on here. That's pulling in roughly, that's temperature, let's go down to volume, feet per minute. Temperature, oh, volume, there we go. It's pulling about 250 CFM of leakage, right? 250, so we got a system that's got 600 CFM airflow. We're pulling in 250, so over a third of the airflow is leaking past the evaporator coil, which does happen, by the way, because we have things like knockouts, we have improperly uh, uh, put in coils where we might have air blowing around the coil instead of through the coil. But yet, if you charge and look at your gauges, you go, oh, superheat and subcooling, they're perfect, my charge is perfect, my coil temp's perfect, my system's perfect, it's not perfect, right? And this is, this is what we'll find in MeasureQuick. So at the end of the day, when you hit this flag up here, we'll see that the system may be undercharged with the refrigerant. And guess what it is? Because I charged it to the airflow. It may say 12 degrees, but it's 12 degrees of superheat for a system that's got, what, 400 CFM, less than 400 CFM airflow. So it looks like it's working great, but it's not working great. If you look right below that, it tells you, hey, you got a potential return air leak or an interstride strip heat. Well, right there's my return air leak, pretty obvious there, but not so obvious by looking at charge, pressures, superheat, and subcooling alone, because MeasureQuick also takes into account the air side of the system, right? So it's so important that you understand these things, so important that we use technology because these are the problems that we miss when we don't.